said, said Malcolm, Malcolm alleged that uh, uh, some of Elijah's women were underage secretaries. And can you expound on that? Yeah, well, I guess they were because they were there. I seen them. I seen them myself. So true. So true. Good evening, messenger. You convinced us that you were the last messenger. How many other bastard children do you have? Whoa, too many to count. Barbershop conversations, guys. We got a special guest in the building, man. Without further ado, I want you guys to click the link, go watch Nine Wives. And we have Samson in the building. How you doing, Samson? Hey, very good. How you doing? Oh, I totally appreciate you. And uh, we were talking backstage. And uh, you you were great friends and still is great friends with Murad Muhammad. Yeah, I was uh, working with him for a couple of years. And mm -hmm. we, uh, I bring to him... Uh, Manny Pacquiao, yep. Javier Casiejo. I mean, I did well with them. <laughs> yeah, on the East Coast, right? Y'all did a lot of work in New Jersey, yeah? Yeah, in uh, Buddy Park uh, Hotel. We used yeah. to do it. How did every... you... I'm sorry, go ahead. We used to do show every month over there. How did you get Manny Pacquiao? Well, uh, Manny Pacquiao, he was presented to to me by a lawyer, mm -hmm. Sidney Hall from San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And I say, why are you coming to me? He say, because I went to everywhere and nobody wanted it. Bob Arnold said that what I do with this uh, small Filipino. Dan Keene said, what I need a Filipino for? And uh, I believe in that time it was somebody else. Oh, a uh, main event. Mm, the Dubas. And, and finally, I said, This is the only one left is you with the uh, Murad. I said, Send me a video and let me check it out. So, what happened? He sent me in that time a VHS video. Yeah. I, I check it out and the opponent fall out. I said, What's wrong with that? He, he took a dive. So then I, I went in slow motion. And I find out that it was a shot in the liver. And I say, oh, oh boy, this is a good one. And mm. the happy, mm. that happened. It was a good one. <laughs> wow. Wow. Great story. Now, just so people can get an understanding, if you don't mind me asking, what was the cost for Manny Pacquiao prior to his what fame? Is, like to, to assume his contract, right? You had to buy his, you had to purchase his contract? Uh, the contract, uh, I, I still have it. He was in a handwriting mm -hmm. with a lawyer, Sidney Hall, for zero dollars. No flipping way. Well, in that time, nobody knows this. Wow. But I make a research why Filipinos fighters, he was uh, most of the time he lose. Mm. And it was because it was 16 hours different from country to country. The food, it was different, and uh, the timing and all that. So I said, you know what? You need to bring this kid two months prior to any fight, and he would perform, and this will happen. And then we give it to to Freddie Roach, that mm. yeah, that he built. Mm. If he make the the touch finish of of uh, Manny Pacquiao. Right. So how did he get the Bob Arum? So, so what's the what's the negotiations between you, Murad? And Bob Arum, because obviously no, he, uh, he got... Bob Arum never was involved. Sidney Hall, mm -hmm. he was in the office of Bob Arum, presented uh, Manny Pacquiao, and and he, and and disliked it. He said it's too small. It's only you know super button way. I don't work so much with that. You know things like that. So you have no interest. So you know, nobody signed a contract. The first contract signed in America it was with Murad Muhammad. M and M four. Wow! So y'all did a co-promotional deal with Top Rank, obviously no. with you and Murad in charge. Murad, he have, he, he was a sole promoter of him. So how did he end up at Top Rank? Well, 
uh, you know, like everyone, including me or you, we have uh -huh. a good past. Uh -huh. He did run uh, Murat and he lost it. Mm, gotcha. 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 So, you know, I was watching a fight yesterday and, you know, David Benavidez is literally becoming one of my favorite fighters, man. Like, for real, man. I like his aura. And, and you know what I liked about him yesterday? I'm not sure if you saw the interview, but Ellie did an interview with him yesterday. And he was in, like, the hallway area in San Diego at the arena. Mm -hmm. And he was taking pictures with the fans. And when he took the pictures with the fans, like, he hit them in, like, the midsection. Like, like, hey, brother, what's up? And I thought that was beautiful, man. I thought that he, like, like he's, like, uh... <laughs> to them, he's like Godzilla, King Kong. <laughs> and and he's like humanizing the experience with him and the fans. And I thought that was just beautiful, man. Well, uh, Benavides is a, is a humble person. Mm -hmm. He make a mistake like all of us. We make mistakes. <clears throat> and he learned from his mistake. And I'm so happy that all the bad stuff that he have in the past, he was in his youth. And now, now, because now it will be too late, like Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Right. and many others ones that they, that they got involved in things that you don't want to be. Right. So right. I, I never forgot, he told me, Samson, I was 18 years old, 19 years old. I make so much money that yeah. that money was, it didn't come with instructions. So I didn't know what to do. Mm. So, mm. you know, this is what happened. Always they say that, the worst enemy for the boxer is not the other boxer. The opponent is the womanizer, the women's, the drugs, the alcohol, the friends that each one of his friends know better than and the promoter. Each one of his friends, he advise him, but he never be in the boxing or he never know about boxing, but he, he advise the fighters, you know. Right. So that is the enemy. Right. Right. Of, of the boxes. Got you. Now, May 21st, he's back. Why David Lemieux and not Charlo? Uh, because that that is a, you know what? <laughs> I start to like you. Oh, why? Well, <laughs> you, you, you do in the nails, you know, you hammer the nails perfectly. Uh -huh. So, by the way, you're the first one. I did many interviews. You're the first one to say that. Okay. And I really appreciate this question. That's love. I was in Mexico in the convention of the WBC mm -hmm. and Eddie Reynoso, that we was the number one anyway, but Eddie Reynoso, that I believe in this moment, he, he made the biggest mistake of his life concerning uh, Penavides. He made the decision without consulting with the fighter that he was Canelo, that he want to go to cruiserweight division. And in the minute that he say that, he want to go to the cruiserweight division, I, I tap him in the back, I say, thank you. Now I want the interim title because you're taking away, if you fight in, in the division in 168, it'd be, I cannot ask for anything, but because he goes to the division up, I had the right to ask for the, for the uh, interim title. And this is what I did. Mm. I asked for the interim title and, and the next available contender, the number two, it was Lemieux. So you cannot jump to somebody else. Now, if Charlo said, I want to fight Benavides, so he had the right to fight Benavides because he beat the A side, because he's a champion right. and he, go, he moved up on weight. But he didn't say that. Got that. Actually, he was not there or nobody to represent him in this moment. Right. But uh, that that fight, it would happen. I don't know if it would ever happen, Canelo, but mm -hmm. Charlo, it would happen. First of all, because Charlo is not afraid of anybody. Mm -hmm. He's my dear friend, too, him and his brother. Mm -hmm. So we have many conversations. In, 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 you know, never about Benavides, but... I know the quality of person it is, and he will fight him when the time is right. Right, right. Was there any negotiations when they were going back and forth online? Did you reach out to Charlo and? No, 
it, was, it, it never was a negotiation because it in now he didn't make the decision to move off, of weight okay. 168 and by the way no fighter is afraid of anyone that we always say no canelo is afraid of benavides it's not true canelo is not afraid of anyone i know him from pro debut maybe the difference between me and the rest of the promoters is that they have a relation with fighters that is not belong to me and i follow the the careers almost from pro debut on the beginning of his career so i can tell you that canelo is not afraid but Eddie Reynoso, who is the, the manager and trainer, doesn't make the decision because he, I can tell you he's afraid because he's the only one he can beat him. He wants to protect his investment. Uh, look, I do the same thing, so I cannot blame him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was, you know, you led me right to it. Uh, on do not a, Fortuna Haney, <laughs> you, know I mean? you hey, went right to that. You didn't want Fortuna to fight Devin Haney. Uh, no, and I actually uh, with Fortuna and Devin Haney, I won the fight, but it was in the wrong time. Mm. When when uh, you have in that time Haney have uh, thirteen fights, mm -hmm. not because I was afraid, because he, he didn't bring nothing to the table at that time. Now, the same thing happened with Plan. It say that uh, I say no to him, or I say no to Morel for Benavides, because it's the wrong time. Not because I'm, a, in that case, I was not afraid. In that case is, it mean nothing. Even for the public in that time, uh, Morel, it was four fights. Why wish Benavides he would fight him? Right. I mean nothing. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so that is the reason that uh, I believe that uh, that sometimes we protect the fighter, but sometimes it doesn't mean nothing. Like now, Benavides versus uh, Bobo. What he bring to the table? You know, he's, he's, a, he's a fighter, that uh, excellent fighter, but the only thing he wants is to win. He doesn't care about the public. He doesn't care about whoever pay. Uh, the ticket to go into the to the arena because the only thing he wanted is to win doesn't matter how running and moving and you know that right. that is the reason that doesn't it would not happen that fight too right that was actually my interview when i interviewed you at the mgm for like two or three minutes that went viral i i cannot hear you for whatever reason can you hear me now let me let me mute you again can you hear me now Hey, let me beam you on beam you. Can you hear me now? Okay, come out and come back in. I'm gonna call you on the phone. Be <clears throat> I cannot hear you. I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna call you right now. I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call you. That's me calling. Can you hear me? Now, do it now. H hit the mute button. You're on mute. You're on mute. Unmute yourself. I can't hear you. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll call you. I can't hear you. Okay, that's. out and come back in I, I I'm, I'm gonna see if he'll come back in oh the interview was getting good man Samson's a good interview man I've never sat down with him man I'm actually happy that I did uh yeah so uh I hey, is you again yeah yeah so what happens is when you get a phone call it mutes you yeah, yeah, yeah that's what happens yeah 
Yeah, yeah, your phone been ringing off the hook. <laughs> I was gonna yeah. say th that was actually my interview with you as it pertains to Caleb Plant, David Benavidez, about three or four years ago. That yeah. went viral. That was me. <laughs> yeah, that was me. Yeah, and and uh, you said something interesting as, as it pertains to Fortuna. You said that when he fought, you paid his salary. Explain that, because do you don't. I, w when you were on the boxing voice, uh, you said I have it in my notes where where you said when he fought the main event on Fox that you had to pay his salary? Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you explain that? Like, how do, the network doesn't pay for the fights, or? Fox, he paid for the fight, but when he's a regular Fox, that he was a, not not a big one, mm -hmm. you know, he was a FS1, mm -hmm. he paid $15,000 for main event. So all the rest, I need to pay from my own pocket, mm. which is means sometimes you invest on the on on the fighter. Got that. And this this is what happened that time. So, so that's fairly expensive for you then, because you got to pay but, both salaries and yeah, and, yeah, and, both of yes. Yeah. And how does that how does that work with? Uh, do you have to buy the date from from PBC uh, or Al Heyman or how does that really, work? You don't need to buy the date. The, you know, this is a really can is is a you know PBC it tried with the FS1 that is it's not any longer anymore. Uh, but it was not, you know, it's not a only the good thing about it, you build the career of your fighter. Got that. Like it was uh Amil Carvidal Jr. from Uruguay, my country, that he came over and he fought as a main event in a staple center. But it was when it was the pandemic, and, you know, and uh, so this 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 time is an investment from the from the promoter. Got that. You follow me? Because the money that he paid is not enough to pay the fighters. Got you. Got you. But and the opportunity to be on TV is very important. No, it's, it's super important to be on TV. Hence yeah. Manny Pacquiao. <laughs> exactly. You know, so so how does that. So, so you said, uh, um. You and FS1 is no longer uh, working together. Seems like has that dissolved or in Fox and with who? FS1. You said no more. F FS1 no, yeah. is no more. You don't see FS1 any longer. Wow. This, uh, last year actually. Okay. Cool. 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 So David Benavidez, David Lemieux, it, that will be for a title eliminator. So he will have the interim no. title. No, it's the interim title. Because when Eddie Reynoso made the decision to to request to fight in in a different division, mm -hmm. in the cruiserweight division in this case, so I have the opportunity to tell him if you do that, you you freeze the the division, okay, the super middleweight division, and and it's enough reason. Gotcha. It's been a convention to request uh, uh, the, the interim title, as well as uh, Sebastian Fundora. It's exactly the same. So that that day, I have two future champions again. Oh, so Sebastian is fighting May 21st now? Not no, April 9th? Sebastian Fundora is fighting on... Uh, April 9th, yeah? April that, yeah. Why hasn't that fight been promoted? It seemed like, why haven't y'all announced that fight? I have it on my calendar, and I tell people about it because I think that's going to be fight of the year. I think. Oh, yeah. Oh. No, but next week, is, it, it'll be a press release. Okay, next week. Be, uh, and that is for the interim title? The interim title the same, is the same case wow. because, almost the same case, uh, because Charlo uh, is fighting uh, Brian Castaño to unification for four titles. Mm -hmm. So that I mean is freezing the oh my god, it's freezing the, <laughs> the division. Uh, okay. So he so so this will be J Jamel Charles' last fight at 154? Uh this I don't know. It be I, I believe that it be the let, let me put it this way. He will not give up the 54 pounders without his brother to give up the 160. So like right. this he can move up. Right. So this everything is a change, you know. Mm. Okay, got it. Why, why such slow promotion? If you don't mind me asking. 
on, on the front door fight? Uh, honestly, it's all about showtime. Mm -hmm. That you're supposed to send a message to Espinoza, the president of Showtime, why he's so slow. <laughs> So are you disappointed in Stephen? Actually, I called Stephen on Friday. So Stephen usually takes about seven to ten days to call me back. <laughs> I oh, left him. A, I left him a mess. I actually left him a message Friday, and uh, so, so I, I, he'll call me this week sometime. He respect you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, normally, doesn't he <laughs> take normally it's thirty days? So oh, okay, he, well, it's about seven to ten days. He's so, gonna take his time. But it's, it's you see the net. We say we are promoters, but really the promoter is Showtime, is ESPN, is mm -hmm. the Zone. We are not. We only working for the for the network. That is the the reality. So, as a promoter, you have no right to to announce or to do press release or whatever without the authorization of the network. Right. Do you believe that network money has has been good or bad for boxing? Look, uh, without the network, it'd be no boxing. Right. So that the answer to your question. Right. True that. So, so PBC is going back to Showtime. Is that the plan? Because PBC, Fox has no Showtime is with PBC. No, no the reason why I ask because PBC. Fox has an. Fox hasn't announced any dates. Yeah, but it, it did a pay per view on on January first. Yeah. So with PBC continue being involved with both network. Why so many pay per views? Because sometimes it take a chance to sell pay per view that the regular network to pay the fighters. We gotcha. we do normally for the fighters to earn the real money. Because, uh -huh. like an example, on January 1st, it, the fighters, he got a good payday. But if we do it openly, it will not have that, uh, you know, like like regular Fox TV, it will not be the money that he got paid, all these fighters. That got each that. one deserves it to get paid correctly. Got that. And... Since it's so challenging, you said with Showtime and or I'm, I'm using the word, feel free to correct me. How were you able to move Fundora so fastly? He fought a lot. How, how was he able to fight so much? And other 154 pounders like Hurd, uh, Harrison and so on wasn't able to fight. Uh, Sometimes the network mm -hmm. sees something in the fight that it can be a new blood in the industry got that and and others boxing that is not charismatic it's not different doesn't have the chance and the people request because showtime as well as fox and other network you receive message from the people saying which one you want to see it again right. and i believe fundora it be like you know, the top guy winning this fight, he will be in the level of uh, Benavides, mm. in the level of uh, uh, other boxers that that the charismatic, different. Remember that Benavides, he was the youngest I ever champion of 168. Yep. Undora is the taller <laughs> fighter ever in the history of boxing on a super welterweight division. That, it mean a lot because people, the curiosity mm -hmm. and the marvel to see a, such a tall guy fighting is what people want to see. Right. So right. that is the reason he fought many, many times, mm -hmm. more than others. Yeah. Because he makes the difference between the others. Mm. How do you see that fight with Lubin playing out? Tough fight. <laughs> I know it's, I have it as pre it could be fight of the year, dude. Yeah, and, and you know the, the funny thing is that again this was the Monday for the WBC, like Lemieux, because it's number one, and then you then he went to the elimination, it's number two, it's one and two fighting. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if you ask me who have the H, obviously you win the fight. I would say because I love my fighters, I would say my guy. Right. But but I, honestly, myself, I don't know who can be, win because wow. both of them is uh, good fights. And the only loss that he has, uh, uh, Lubin, he was one punch that he didn't see it. So you cannot criticize why he lost that fight. Right. You know, one punch, he makes a difference. Right. Yeah, that yeah, that was. I, I thought. Uh, are, are you familiar with basketball at all? No. Okay, so I was gonna give you a basketball, and I was gonna give you a basketball. This way, the only thing I know is boxing. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So okay. if you ask something else, I have no clue. Even oh. music, I know. You know, I don't know the who is uh, the top guy in music because I I don't listen. I only concentrate in my business mm. because. It's my business, but it's something that I love so much. Right. right. And I demonstrate because I'm the only promoter that worldwide I'm talking about now. Mm -hmm. gotcha. that I did three tournaments in the amateur in my country. Right. And I'm the only sponsor. And every Sunday in my country, you see fights like today, six o'clock Easter time, uh, you will see, I should know this, uh, eight o'clock Eastern. Five o'clock. Uh, you, you can see a uh, boxing from my country, amateur, and all these, I invest my money in something that I believe that is good for the youth. You going out of the streets. Uh, I took several from jail. Wow. Uh, yeah, I, I have uh, several letters from mothers to say, Thank without you. what I do, my son he will be dead or in jail. I I took many people from the streets, drugs, alcohol, and now he's in the gym. So for me, in my age, already, you know, I I I build an empire, but I spend that empire for the youth not only in Uruguay, in Argentina, and the reason because I'm a Latino, mm -hmm. I do that. In America, even if I want to do it, I, I cannot do it because it's too many uh, organizations mm -hmm. that, uh, th that they do amateur and you cannot get involved. No, no, that's absolutely beautiful. And I would love to extend my, my thank you for that because I, I, I totally believe that that's important, you know what I mean, to, to reach back. You know what I mean? And, and and keep on serving your community, even though you're in another country, your money still travels and your heart. Uh, that shows a big amount of heart to do something su such as that matter when you can live very comfortably in Las, you in Las Vegas now and do what you want to do. But you're still reaching back to your community, which is beautiful. Uh, it, listen, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an American citizen for many years. I'm 50 years in this country. I married for 48 uh, I love this country, and I remember when, when it, in, in Vietnam I was, I come to this country, and two months later I love it so much that I went and I tried to, uh, you know, uh, inscribe to uh, Vietnam and to go to Vietnam. But in that time it was over. <laughs> so, but but I I love uh, this country. I like, you know. My culture is so different of the American culture. What's your home country? Uh, Uruguay. Uruguay, okay. Uh, Uruguay is a small country, only 3 million people. Uh, we are the first one in the history of, box, of boxing, the history of uh, st study that if you don't bring your child to school, you go to jail. So it was mandatory. And if that it was the first country uh, worldwide. Secondly, it's something that uh, Murad Muhammad in that case, mm -hmm. uh, he appreciates, he knows, and that is the reason that he loved me so much when I work with him, is because in Uruguay there's no discrimination. It doesn't exist. I still have my friend from Uruguay from school that he was a black kid, and I never know he was black mm -hmm. because we never, 
we never, you know, if I cut my my arm and it be blood, it be red, exactly the same like my friend right. that that it, that that it was black. So when I come to this country, I start to realize that it's not the same in other country like mine, because in 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 a way we is a why people discriminate or Latino discriminate with one and 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 the African American discriminate with the other. But wow. in my country never happened that till today. Right. We open arms to Cubans now with this with Venezuela, with all the communist countries coming to my country and we are equal. There's no different. You not turn your 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 face when you see a black man with a white woman in my country, it's normal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh -huh. So Murad, I never forgot this this story I love to say because uh, Murad did good things and sometimes not so good. But I never forgot we was in uh, New Jersey and he was, you know, I was looking for him in, in the, uh, after the weighing. And then I opened the door of, of uh, when he was the way in several hours after, and, and he was giving a speech to about 20 or 25 black men. Mm -hmm. And when I walk in, he was talking about the Quran. And everybody, he looked at me like, you know, what, 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 is, what is doing this guy over here, this white boy, when we're talking about the Quran? And I can tell you probably I know more about the Quran like many others, mm. because I have many, many friends, uh, Muslim friends. So I never forgot when I say, why you look with that face to my brother? Because he's my soldier and I wanted respect from all of you. Mm. And each one of them, he hugged me. Mm. And, and that is what is all about boxing. You know, we don't discriminate in boxing. That we are a family, regardless the color, the accent, or anything. And 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 I love this uh, the sport. And if you see my fighters, most of them is a uh, black from Dominican Republic, <laughs> from Colombia, mm -hmm. you know? uh, in Uruguay. That I do have it. I mean, in Argentina, and and I, I'm so proud because I born in a country with freedom till today. Do you think there's discrimination in boxing? No. You don't? The only difference in boxing is sometimes you're not charismatic, regardless if you're white or black or yellow. If you're not charismatic for the public, you can call yourself that discriminate with you. Like in the case of, of a, a boo-boo. It's not charismatic. It doesn't have a following. Look is uh, is uh, social media, and you see that it's not too many. Henny, it's not charismatic. You know what I mean? Like this is many fighters that is not charismatic, not because it's a bad people, because that's an understand that boxing, you bring charismatic together like Benavides, like Fundora, like even Javier Fortuna. He's charismatic. People love him, you know, because, you know, he gave up everything in the fight and he can talk. And this sometimes people think that is uh, like, you know, a case uh, that uh, he said that Bob Aron, that I believe that uh, he ha I have some issues with him, but I don't believe he discriminate. He have nothing to discriminate because he's wealthy thanks to the African-American fighters too. So he, he cannot discriminate. Whoever said that, from any promoter is totally wrong. Mm. I remember when Golden Boy started to do business, 
I was working with Golden Boy for 10 years. And I say, if you don't get African-American, only Mexican, so then you discriminate. And I remember in that time, Richard Schaefer, he said, you're right. And Oscar de la Hoya, and he, he, he didn't realize that you cannot have a stable only with Latinos or Mexican. So, but not because it was discriminated or, or, the, or, or have discrimination against any ethnic group. The only thing he didn't realize that it was wrong. Wow. Yeah, it, it's funny you mentioned Bob because Bob called me while we we're doing the interview. <laughs> and I'm going to call him after I get done with you. So how funny that you mentioned his name. And, it, it, and you know what? Bob and Don King, regardless that Donnie come from jail and Bobby come from uh, uh, the best uh, university, uh, both of them, without him today, you will not be there and I will not be here because he built boxing. Right. That nobody did it like like these two uh, personalities, and I have the most respect because thanks to Bob and Don, uh, I'm in business. Right. Very smart people, both of them. Right. It was there's no other promoter that I can mention saying that is the best great promoter ever. Who would you give the nudge to, Bob or Don? Uh, <laughs> that that would be hard. I believe both right. of them. Because the first uh, fighter that he make a million dollars, it was with Duncan. Right. That's Even though he keep the change. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what does Al Heyman have to do to surpass him? Uh, Al is a totally different personality because I believe he's doing much more like both together, but doesn't like the cameras or interview because the only thing he do is work on and, and he watch the fighting that to, to get the right money and supervise everything that uh, he need to do with the fighters. He love fighters. So, and respect fighters. And I believe that uh, Don, even though or Bob, I don't know if, if we do the same thing, mm -hmm. but it's not a promoter. So you cannot qualify as a promoter. Right. But it helped a lot, the industry, I can tell you that much. Yeah, I've heard a lot of great stories from Daniel Jacobs to Adonis Stevenson. Uh, many stories of Al Heyman reaching beyond what he's supposed to do to actually reach out and help people. Let, let me put it this way. When I talk to Al, not very often, mm -hmm. uh, but when I'm sick or my wife is sick or I receive flowers in the hospital from, from my wife, is Al Heyman. With that, he say everything. When I'm sick, he calls me very often, every day when I'm in the hospital. But when I'm healthy, he doesn't need to call me. He, I have no time to say hello. <laughs> right, right. You know, it's working. And it's, an, it's a human being. And I, I want to show you a dollar bill that I beat him when I told him not to take the fight between his first fight and he was, uh, I'm sorry, because sometimes I forget the Burn name. Burning Burning no, right. he, he need to fight the snake. And I said, don't take the fight. And he said to me, why? Because I know boxing. Don't take the fight because it will get beat. And he said, I bet you a dollar. And I do have the dollar. Let me show it to you. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but it's his signature saying I was right. <laughs> and who was it? Going, him. Who was, was he going to fight? Mayorga? No, no, it was uh, the snake. Um, what is his name, man? A Latino one. Mora, Mora, Sergio Mora. Mora. Yeah. Sergio Mora. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mora. 
and he did it. I bet him a dollar, and I do have it. <laughs> yeah, that, that, uh, that's a great story. And how is your health? Because you, you, you had some health setbacks a couple years ago. How are you doing? Uh, for two years, uh, I was uh, with a very uh, tough uh, cancer, very aggressive. Mm. And I was two years that uh, in one point, the doctor told me to go home. Wow. And I say, why? You know, <laughs> you sent me to die. They say, the insurance doesn't pay. So you can, we cannot do that. And I said, don't worry about it. I took my credit card. I said, let's do it. And it saved my life. And then when he said that I was free of cancer, I say, I feel very sad because if you don't have the money, mm. I'd be dead by now. And how come in this country can happen that, that stuff? Right. How many people die when you have the opportunity with money to save his life? That is the reason that rich people live longer and regular people. I get that. Poor people. I get and it's that. very sad in a country like this, mm -hmm. like it's America. Even in my own country, they, it's free, all the treatment. Mm -hmm. And over here, if you don't have the money, the insurance, you will not pay. And I paid like 3000 a month in insurance for my wife and myself. Whew. And it would not pay the treatment. Wow. Wow. That, that, that puts a lot in perspective. You know what I mean? Because at the top of this interview, you said that you migrated from Uruguay. And now you're an American. And now health insurance will leave a lot of people basically knocking on death's door. The lack of insurance will have a lot of Americans knocking on death's door. That's correct. Yeah. No, no that's absolutely. It's very sad. Whew. Yeah, that's a lot to intake. Uh, what's next for David Benavidez? Do you want boo-boo? Do you want... Uh, because, I mean, the fans ain't going to take another David Lemieux. <laughs> <You know>? No. <laughs> Look, <laughs> uh, everybody said that he's an easy fighter, but they have a punch. He has a right hand. He can change the history of a fighter. Mm -hmm. But I never look uh, further of uh, in this moment than Lemieux. But if it's one fight that I really wanted and the public wanted is Chavo. So we see. But right. not, not boom. It's not about money. I told him, you know, you offer him seven million, Eddie Hearn. I say it's not enough, but it's not for the money. You know, people think that I'm greedy for the money, but it's not really. It's what you bring to the table. And Bubu doesn't bring nothing to the table besides a fight that winning or loser, you will look bad. Doesn't pay. Yeah, you did say, I remember you did. You just said that a couple of weeks ago <laughs> on, on the boxing voice. Yeah, you but it's not for, that, that's for the money. Mm-hmm. I say a lot more, not because it was not enough seven million. I, I will fight him for five million if he say I come to fight, I come to engage. He will not come to engage. He will come and run and move and you know. Wouldn't you say you have proper time to prepare for him to force him to engage? Like Kodo did Floyd. Remember Kodo, Kodo did Floyd like that. No, you ain't about to outbox me. I'm, I'm <laughs> You but, uh, you know, it's, it doesn't doesn't bring nothing to the table. Canelo, he would fight for much less for half or quarter of what anybody else for Canelo because it's not about the money. The money is coming later. It's about to have to be number one in the world. And this right. is what he wants Benavides. And he told me, look, if you if you think that I will lose the fight uh, uh, with Canelo for one moment. I can tell you from now, I will fight him and you pay me only the travel, uh, the travel and the sparring partners and the training camp and I will fight him because I will get paid after I beat him. Right. 
Have you? So have, that is that no one, no Pidol, no anyone that he fought uh, Canelo before, he will say, I will fight him with no money. Mm. Don't pay me. Only pay my people, you know, mm. the training camp, the, the trainer, the, you know, sparring partner, that's all. And I will fight him. No one, he will say that and will act and he will do it. Mm. Only Benavides. That yeah. is the man that he want to be the number one in the world is a boxer and be in the history of boxing. Like he was the youngest one. Right. How, how do you negotiate with Charlo? Is that th since he, since he doesn't have his own representation? Uh, well, till now it was no negotiation, so I cannot tell you how it will be, but definitely Al Heyman, he, he will do because Al Heyman represent him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Teach me something. Floyd did an interview um uh he i forget who he did it with. i'm not sure if you saw it because i want to oh gosh who was it i totally forgot who it was but it's a non-boxing interview floyd <sighs> floyd said that he's still getting paid from pay-per-view seven eight years ago what does that mean uh okay let me go for pay-per-view the pay-per-view you get paid when the client pay the, the guy who book for $79.95, many of those, he doesn't pay after a month or six months or a year or seven years. He need to send to collection and all that. So then when he get paid the network, he pay the fighter. Does it make sense? Yeah. So so when they, when they count the pay-per-views, so let's say Floyd Mayweather fought yesterday. When would he get the pay-per-views, like uh, typical? Uh, look, I pay the pay-per-view on the next, actually, automatic, it be the deduct from my uh, checking account. Right. The the net, uh, the cable. Right. I have uh, my cable, so automatically take it out. But many people, especially people that you believe that, so, you know, maybe... For you, for me, or for many other, seventy-nine dollars is not a lot of money. Sure. But this these people, seventy-nine dollars, he can eat for a few days, and doesn't yeah. have the money, or he lose his uh, his business, or he lose his work, or his unemployment after the fight. So each one he have a, a you know his own personal a situation. The network doesn't cheat to the fighter. So when he get paid, like an example, he sold, I forgot, but seven years ago, I'm pretty sure he sold a million viewers. Absolutely. From that million viewers, a percentage, it can be percent. Uh, many died, you know, after the fight, many get sick. So all this doesn't pay. Now, instead to have a million, you have 900,000. And then you have another 100,000 that he lost his job, that uh, something Got happened it. with the family. So you have a 20%. So yeah. now, instead to make 10 million, the network, he didn't collect 2 million. Got that. And that is the reason that when he collect the money, so then the fighter get paid. Right. So, and get, yes, that is true. So when a fighter walks out the ring, he just gets his guarantee. The guarantee plus whatever, every month, whatever people pay, he get paid. So every month he'll be getting a pay-per-view check based off of yeah. how many? Maybe uh, every yeah. three months, four months, you know. I got you. Make a, I got a, a check for a 10, 10 viewers, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But uh, this is all... Uh, done correctly for the fighter got that got that uh you said something that was pretty compelling on on kqk shout out to kqkc uh you did an interview with him a couple of weeks ago you said boxers aren't free agents so, because uh, pbc fighters say that they're free agents they can do what they want but you said they're not 
Uh, well, some of those, he walked away from PPC. And, and Al Heyman is a humble man. He's, he believed that he cannot comply with the fight and letting go. Right. And that doesn't happen with any other promoter or, or people who try to help. You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, even though if you have a contract, uh, it's a, an advisor. And if he doesn't want, if you don't want to stay with them, he lets you go. Hmm. Regardless of the country. So, so at PBC or, so let's say top ranked PBC, let's just clump them all up. If you're with the organization, you basically adhere to the man that's connected to the network. So it would be Bob Arum, top rank, Al Heyman to Fox and Showtime and Eddie Hearn. To the zone. Yeah, sure. It's, it's, zone. It's, it's typically like like a fighter can't do or say really what he wants. No, it, I believe you're wrong in that. Okay. The fighter is the last one that he makes the final decision. Gotcha. But it's the final decision. You cannot force anyone uh, to fight. Right. On the same time, when it's advised not to take a fight like a Canelo versus Menavides. So then, you know. I get it. it the fighters say, okay, you know, I you, get it. You, you're older than me, you know better than me. Right. Because all this is warriors that you will fight anybody. Okay. I We're approaching on an hour, so let me know when you're ready to go. Oscar, Oscar said, he said, I laughed at this because I don't know Golden Boy to have a million dollars. But Oscar said that he sent uh, Isaac Cruz and Al Heyman a million dollars to fight Ryan Garcia. Uh, I this I cannot have in my opinion because I was not involved with the, the negotiation because either one is not my fighter. So right, right. I try not to put my nose in every business. Put it that okay. way. <laughs> I tell you. <laughs> and what do you think is going to happen to Devin Haney? Devin Haney and Cambosis will they fight? Or will, or will Cambosis? He will never fight him. Why? Because he doesn't bring what Cambosis won. Cambosis, regardless, he, he, he was not a lucky knight because he fought his, his heart out. But Lopez, he was not 100% healthy. That is the mistake that many fathers that he have a son, he make a mistake and stay to see that this his fighter and his son cannot make the weight that is suffering. Mm. You know, he didn't he didn't put attention on that. So he fought a fighter that he was hurt before he came to the fight and he beat him. I don't want to take any you know, I not to take, take nothing away from Cambosos because Cambosos, he will come to fight regardless how was, how healthy or not healthy was uh, Lopez. But he beat him. And now the father of Cambosos is exactly the same like the father of Lopez. Oh, it, that's a good point. He transferred all his bad stuff. That's a great point. That's a great point. So, so it, it's, it's so bad, even worse, that uh, actually it's, it's worse than Lopez's father. It's senior. Really? You know, oh. I don't think you can be worse than Lopez's father. Oh, no. He beat him. If it's a, between <laughs> Lopez and Camboso senior, he can make a mandatory for the champion. I can tell you that much. Wow. Nobody close. At the end of the day, my prediction is that Ryan Garcia will fight a fight like like now, mm -hmm. and then he be with Camboso that he can get not the same money like Henny because Henny he will beat him. Henny he will destroy Camboso, <laughs> so he will not take that fight and doesn't bring what he want the money 
and the fame because you will lose in Australia, in Japan or whatever you make the fight. I can, you know, Henny, it will knock the shit out of him. Wow. So now what is looking for money and chance and the only chance you have and the only money you have is with Ryan Garcia, nobody else in this moment. Mm -hmm. Lomachenko, he will give him the money that he want because he want $10 million or more. Is that what, is that what you're hearing? Cambosis want 10 million? 10 million, yeah. Ooh. The only way he can get 10 million, it cannot be with Henny, mm -hmm. is with Lomachenko. But Lomachenko is a brave man and he loves his country and he's in the front, try to save Ukraine against Russia. So mm -hmm. it will not happen now. So the only chance he has to beat is Ryan Garcia and make money. He will not make the 10 million, but he, he have a shot to win, but he have no shot with uh, no shot. I mean, nothing. There's no way, even if he come 50% in Australia, he will beat him anyway. Because Henny is not a charismatic like others, but he's a really good fighter. This I cannot take it away from him. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. a really good one. So what's the value of Haney's belt right now? Look, he doesn't have an opponent. He thought that this week, Fierro, he be his opponent, the way he's talking in that zone, that he's coming for big money. And happened to be that he's not a qualified to fight him because Haney, he needs a real opposition. So probably it's, it's looking for somebody else at this moment. Mm. There's not too many lightweight uh, uh, good uh, boxer in, to face and challenge Henny in this moment. Henny is an excellent boxer. This I cannot take it away from him. Uh, he's definitely a hell, a hell of a boxer. I, I say one day I say I I bet you if I take you to the strip of Vegas. You can walk up and down, and and it be only few people who recognize. <laughs> and and the father and got up. Devin Haney. Devin Haney is not a recognized figure. You don't think so? Oh no. Wow. It, it's not a, a Benavides. It's not, you know, Ryan Garcia. You know. He's, he's, he's a great fighter, but again, I understand. I understand. He's, he's not a recognized. And on top of that, he's, he's a champion that he, to me deserves to be a champion. Mm -hmm. To me, he's a great fighter, but sometimes you need to be more charismatic to be in, in the business on a big time like Canelo. Canelo, in the beginning, he was charismatic in, in Spanish, and then he learned English. And now he can, Yeah, now he's, he, he's to the moon and beyond. That's correct. Yeah. Do you think Haney is, is trending up because his attendance at his last fight was almost double? You know, it's, it's getting more popularity after he beat a, a great champion, Linares. Like, uh, Jorge Linares, mm -hmm. but he's still far away from, from the top. You know what I mean? Mm. He's, he's far away from the rest of the champions. So what would you do with Haney if 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 you had a crystal ball? How would how would you move Devin in twenty twenty two? Look, I need to give him credit to Eddie Hearn. He would look for a former champion to fight him. Mm -hmm. You know, he would not fight a, a, another youth that is stepping up. You know, this couple of good Mexicans that he, he, he will take. But uh, he's, uh, he's with Golden Boy, like Cepeda, that is a undefeated 25 fights, mm. 25 KO, I believe, something like that. That would be a good fight, but uh, he, he doesn't bring nothing to the table for him. He, he needs to look for a real uh, former champion that is still active, that, uh, that he given a fight, and with name. Because till now, he, the only name he have, and this is the reason that he went up he stuck, it was because uh, with the... Gamboa? 
no, no, no. Cowboy was hard work with the uh, Jorge Linares. Oh, Jorge Linares. The real, real fight that he beat him with no easy. Even mm -hmm. though he got hurt, him, but it's only one punch. But he showed the heart of Henny that he was hurt and he come up, you know, and he continued fighting. You know, I remember it was in the 11th round. It was that, somewhere in there. I was there. Mm -hmm. That 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 Jorge Linares is showing the way how to go to the corner. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was usher. Yeah, that was that was pretty dope. Like his bullfighting. Yeah. yeah, I know. But 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 again, that is show what kind of boxer, kind of fighter is Henny. Right. He's really good. And 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 when he he got hurt, he didn't back out. He comes stronger. And that what people love. So right. he gets that. It's the same thing like Maravilla Martinez. He was good, but after he knocked, uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, the second time that he lost the first time. Uh, the second time is a uh, uh, Paul, uh, what he was? Who fought the Maravilla Martinez that? Uh, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, well, uh, now he's paralyzed. Oh, um, oh, shucks. In an uh, accident. Paul Williams. Paul Williams, oh, yeah. that's right. Paul Williams. When he beat Paul Williams by KO, then he started people take notice of that. Mm -hmm. But before that, nobody cared much about Sergio Martinez. And and now when he beat Jorge Linares, it really make a step up. Got that it. I give him credit to. But he's an excellent fighter. Uh, he can beat Cambosos with no issues. And I believe, strongly believe that he given a good fight to Lomachenko and maybe even beat him, Lomachenko. Maybe even beat him. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I I like that fight, but Bob wouldn't give him that fight at all. Oh no, he would not. Uh, Bob told me on the show. He said, "No way." I, no. He way. said, so "He said you're third. third." He said, "You're third. I said, "No, that was for the uh, uh, Tia Fima Lopez." He says, "You're third because Bill came on the show because you know because you know when you call Bill's name, he just pops up. You know, Bill yeah. is great at doing that. He is uh, he's one of the best promoters ever you know, in terms of promoting his son. And yeah, so, so but, Bob but, came on. Yeah, but you see, Bill is different." Of La Manche, of uh, I'm sorry, of uh, Cambosos and Lopez, mm -hmm. because he's a smart person. Mm -hmm. Even though he bet with me fifty thousand yeah, dollars, yeah. <laughs> so I remember I bring the check. Uh -huh. I then I, I give you cash. I say I, I give you a certified check. I do everything legal. <laughs> <laughs> I lose. I heard so it. That was fun. That, that was so, fun that day. You, you know, I have respect for Bill. And I have respect for Haney. But the, the truth, sometimes people, the you like to have a sweet liar. Mm -hmm. You're lying to these people and it's happy. And when you tell the truth, it's sad. But honestly, it, people doesn't know Haney the way he's supposed to know. Because okay. of, of his quality of fighter. Because okay. he, he didn't do enough to get the heart of the public. Okay. And um Lou DeBella. How you think Lou DeBella is going to move him? Like what's Lou DeBella thinking in this whole situation? Uh, most likely we finish in a lawsuit because doesn't listen to the promoter. The father doesn't listen to him. This is what I heard. Wow. So Lou is he have an issue most likely we finish in a lawsuit. So if if I say that we finish a lawsuit, this means that they have no relation, mm. a, a healthy relation with the Cambosos family. Mm. Got it. Got it. And I'm, I'm going to get you out. We've been over here an hour. One more question. Why is Gamboa and Isaac Cruz the co-main event on Earl Spence? I, I think that's a terrible co-main event. Because Gamboa has nothing left. That, that uh, probably you're right. However, you have a good name. You have a good name, and and Cruz, the Mexican love him in Texas, so he will win the fight. Mm -hmm. Got the balance. Yeah. He, he, he will. He will. He will sell 
halal tickets. Remember, Texas is halal Latinos. Mm, I get you. I with get Mexico. You. Business move. Business yeah, move. so it's a business uh, decision. That is really good. But they will give it a fight. Mm-hmm. Not for too long, but they give it a fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I told I totally appreciate you coming in, hanging out with me, man. Being spontaneous, man. I, I had you for over an hour. I want to say thank you, man, and come back, man. You got to come back once every time you call me, baby, regardless what I am. No, I, I totally appreciate you, man. And forty eight years you've been married, dog. Forty eight years. I, I must be a good man, no? <laughs> yeah, got to be great. You got to be great. Yeah, and, 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 hey, yes, forty eight years married and happy. Yeah, and she got to be greater because she put oh, up she with you. <laughs> she's a good guy. She's with me always in every I've fight. Seen her tons of times. I just never spoken with her, but I see her all the time. Yeah. And uh, thank you, man. And uh, I'm I'm I, I'm rooting for David Benavidez, man. I like how he, I like how David Benavidez is moving. I'm glad that he owned up to his mishaps, and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to David Benavidez. I got Lubin beating Fondora. I got actually, you know what? I'm glad, let's end on this. Let's so we spice it up a little bit. I got Fondora like Floyd and uh Floyd coming out fight. The tall guy. What's his name? Which one is For- Diego Fondora. Corrales? Diego Corrales and Floyd. That's how I have that fight. <laughs> what do you say to that? Diego Corrales was my dear friend. Wasn't he? Awesome guy. So yeah. I heard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Diego. Uh, it'd be a really good fight. It's going to be a great fight. Uh, it's 50 50. Mm-hmm. So I don't believe the betting it be any favors. Right. Maybe 110. You know. minus 110 minus 105 minus yeah. 110 minus oh plus 105 right somewhere right. in there yeah. Oh, yeah. plus 110 plus oh, 115 105 yeah. yeah but it'd be very close I, I strongly believe that it could happen the fight of the year i believe so if you ask me i can tell you that uh, i have you know the differential of sight is tremendous mm. and uh, is Cunningham, his trainer, is 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 a very smart trainer, very knowledgeable. Right. And I believe that he will come with the plan. But Fundora Father, Freddy is another one that he, that is very smart. <laughs> okay, okay. You know what I mean? So I mean I mean it be such a great fight. I, I mean people who know boxing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm excited for it. It, it, it. I believe that it'd be the biggest uh, rating on Showtime for the year, for the whole and they, year. And they need it. Showtime needs it bad. Why is rating it, so it, it bad would be. Showtime? Why, why is it so bad? No, the, the problem that they have too many fights, too many events, mm-hmm. and sometimes it gets slow, you know, authorization and all that, you know. Right. Who knows? But uh, the fight that anybody that loves Boston, you need to see that one. Where is it going to be? L.A., Vegas? Where is it going to be? Uh, we, we live, you know, we're uh, negotiating now. <laughs> it got to be in L.A. or Vegas. But you know what's a hotbed now? Well, you got David going to Phoenix, so it's not going to be there. Maybe y'all can push it down to San Diego real quick. <laughs> I don't know, but it will be like you say, it be California or Nevada. It cannot go it, to some place. It can't go nowhere else. It definitely no. can't go nowhere else. And uh I thank you, man. I'm glad you're healthy and I'm glad everything is working out for you too, man. I see you on you get a lot of dates, man. How are you getting all these dates? It, 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 tell me that. How are you getting all the how are how let, let me are, put it this way? If uh, I tell you all my secret, I'd be out of business. So I will say, God bless you, and I see uh, you next time. <laughs> uh, you in the ring more than Sam, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, Appreciate my dear friend. Sam is Thank my you. love, man. I love Thank Sam to death. Thank you. Appreciate Bye-bye. you. Thank you. <laughs> Barbershop conversation, man. I have fun, man. That was a fun interview, man. I haven't interviewed him in about four or five years. And uh, so thank you guys. I really support you. Click the link below. Go watch Nine Wives. Extraordinary film. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Appreciate you.